Right, I am here with Jess Hi. and Simon. Hello. So, um, wow, this is weird to be here. Uh, you're my first <laughs> where interview. Are we? we are in, I don't know, where are we? Uh, we're in the main control room of units, oh. is something I would probably say on a semi daily basis, yeah. <laughs> is that just part of it now? You just can't help but brag. No, exactly, yeah. You get nowhere. I get to work at a top <laughs> secret location. But I can't tell you anything about. Of yes. course. Well, before we get into specifics about Time Fracture itself, I have a question sort of about immersive theatre as sort of a genre. Because it is very different, obviously, to theatre. I mean, we're sat as we would in a normal theatre. But usually you're all running about like mad. So before you came here, was there any sort of prior knowledge or experience with immersive theatre? I'll... Uh, you first. Yes! <laughs> uh, yes, um, I've done various things with different immersive theatre companies. I've worked with um, Secret Cinema quite a few times. So I did Secret Cinema Stranger Things, which was really fun. Uh, again, very chaotic and sci-fi, because I'm a big sci-fi fan. So, uh, yeah, I've done bits and pieces with that. And I also used to work with a circus company, and we do immersive stuff with the circus as well. Um, they're called Shivari Circus, Circus, and they're very cool. I'll check them out. Who did, yeah. who, did, who did you play in Stranger Things? I was Joyce Byers. Oh, that's yeah. a good role. She's great. She's bonkers, but I love it. Yeah, <laughs> she's great. Well, all the best roles are. Yes, and over to you, Simon, as well. Uh, much less experience uh, in immersive theatre. Um, uh, I came on late to uh, Secret Cinema Shawshank Redemption, did a, did, a, did a bit on that, but otherwise, this is my first kind of real shindig in uh, immersive theatre. What a first go it is. I know, I'm, I feel very lucky. Um, it's an amazing uh, experience. And I mean, for me, a huge challenge to kind of just jump in and, and, and at times just kind of just improvise uh, content that you don't, we haven't even necessarily agreed on yet. We have, is it even in world? Is it the right, you know, am I, <laughs> the, the, the fear of getting things wrong. And, yeah. But obviously that is the, also the joy of it in the process. And you'll probably think the same, Jess, is that there's a lot of failing, but it's kind of failing and enjoying it. Because if, 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 if you find out what doesn't work, then you soon find out what does work. And then yeah. you're like, you're onto a winner. So, how, I mean, that's one of the other questions I, I meant to put in here is how much do you think is scripted versus you're making it up on the spot slash sort of you've got it stored up in the old brain? I, I, I mean, f f for me, uh, a lot of it, I'm, I'm, both my characters that I play are quite scripted. Um, within that, I've then found moments, you know, and, and a lot of the times you'll have interactions that come back again and again, you know, certain yeah. comments and people's opinions of your characters come back again and again. You sort of, you arm yourself with a few different, like, you know, weapons to fire back, if that makes sense. But at the beginning, I mean, we knew what the scene is supposed to do, but what we're specifically saying was all created by the actors and then honed by the writer and, 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 and that collaboration was, yeah. was, was very strong. How about with your characters? Is there a lot of sort of bouncing back and forth or is it quite heavily scripted? Uh, it's, it's a bit of both really. The nice thing about having such a long run of a show is also you can find the space where yeah. you can create more content and you can create banter with the audience. Because you're here to have fun and you're here to be entertained. Yes, okay, you know, you're saving the universe and it's a big deal. But, you know, it, it's, it, that's what becomes interesting for me personally as a performer is to find the little nuggets in between all the scripted pieces. Um, so, um, one of, well, both of my characters actually is, is the same again like Simon we've got certain scripted bits which allow structure for the plot to make sure that everyone's on the same page and everyone has the same information um, but then apart from that you've got the freedom to create whatever you like and that's really fun yeah. well is that, is, would you say that's sort of the main draw of it just sort of the freedom of it I think so and I think that's probably <clears throat> what a lot of people would suggest immersive theatre is and, and when immersive theatre really works yeah. you know when you, when you enter into a world that you've maybe only ever seen on television or heard about and suddenly someone saying right go off and touch that computer see if you, anything happens you know mm. talk to that scientist what do they say right they've sent you on a mission great i need you to go and talk to the prime minister on the phone or or whatever it is um and yeah i think that's definitely the freedom of it and totally when you find a moment that is new is banter is improvisation and you see that that sort of shine in the other person's eyes that's when it's really rewarding because you've, you've, you've given them a sort of individual show that no one else is going to ever have and that's, yeah. that's really nice. I think that's, that's something that's really important about immersive theatre for me is that you're putting the audience member in the centre of their story 
and you're making it real for them because that's why we create these worlds is yeah. so that you can have your own individual experience and you're in charge of it like an open world game or Dungeons and Dragons yeah. but real yeah. that's sick that's so cool um, that's what I really like about it I think for me trying to put the audience first and in the centre and in control as well or make them feel like they're in control yeah. sometimes <laughs> you have to like you're like no we're going to go this way <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's that's something that I really enjoy about it. I think. No, terrific. Thank you very much. <laughs> I got one question in, and I knew my curiosity would get the better of me, and I'm keep asking <laughs> questions. I've, I've got a tight schedule. I need to stay put on this loud chair on the loudest floor I've ever heard in it's my life. It's so loud. Quite a loud one. Yeah. 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 yeah, I do get to shout over that loudness every, every day. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> come on, everybody. We need to get through the fracture. <laughs> That'll annoy someone out uh, behind the stage. Um, so getting back onto Time Fracture itself, uh, how did you get involved with Time Fracture? I'll start with you. Um, uh, audition came through from the agent. Um, uh, came along, had, had an audition. I auditioned originally for uh, the Leonardo da Vinci track. Um, Spoilers. Say again? Spoilers. Spoilers. It's in the is advertising, that, that, I mean, it's, it's fine. On, it's on the poster, right? Well, there we go. Um, if you're wondering who that weird guy is on the poster. <laughs> that's Leonardo da Vinci. Um, and then, uh, obviously, it was it didn't I did I didn't have a great audition personally. I really? didn't think. Yeah, no, no. And so then we we tried. We we actually ran in here, and they were like, right, you're in charge of this facility. Go, like improvise. Oh, did you have the audition here? Yeah. So the wow. the auditions were in uh, that area there, which begins with G that we can't say. Um, and uh, they were like, no one's seen this. Come in here quickly. And I was like, okay, uh, just uh, you're in charge. Go. And I just had to sort of improvise that this was my Ooh. workplace and I was in charge. Um, and two days later, they were like, all right, we'll have him. Uh, and then I think about wow. four days later, we started. And I was one of a few who joined the cast. Je Jess had been in from the beginning. Um, and so a lot of it was kind of catching up or at least it felt like that um because yeah. these guys have put in so much work already mm. for the show uh, and we're already smashing it out the park so it was a lot of like oh my god a, a, a sort of imposter it's theory giving you like um, a, a bar to sort of rise to totally it? which is also great as well you see someone stepping up and you think right i need to i need to work on this so a lot of homework a lot of stuff like that but, no, totally. but yeah how about you Jess? um i did an audition before it started so I feel like Simon says I've been here since the beginning. Not to brag. And not to brag. <laughs> um, but yes, and, and the audition that I did again was terrible, only because I did it at my place of work at the time, which was during lockdown, and it was in a rum company's like storage area. Um, <laughs> it was off. It was very strange, um, and it was over Zoom and just running around like this packing area with just bottles of booze <laughs> everywhere. It was, it was like something out of an episode, to be fair, because yeah. it was just so strange. And the Doctor decor. Who and the rum. And the rum, yeah. <laughs> it was just very bizarre. Um, and it had, it used to be an old club. So, yes, so the decor was also quite sci-fi-esque and lots of neon tape on the walls and things like that. So it really did look like an episode of Doctor Who. But I actually auditioned for... A, an alien yeah. and I'm not going to say which Spoilers. one here yeah. um, and, a, and a time lord guide mm. um, and I didn't get that I got something completely different <laughs> very good proviso they, they don't only employ terrible actors if that's, are you sure? I don't want you to think that two out of two bad auditions it's very much an actor thing to think we've had a terrible audition <laughs> right well I look it's forward a, to a, the four actually, next you know, yes yeah, exactly. <laughs> also saying the exact same thing like Oh, all the good actors were busy, yeah. No, it's very much, a, it helps us deal, I, thought, I don't know about you, but it helps me deal with an audition if I think it's gone terribly. Just, it gets it out of my head quicker and I don't have to, you know, overthink for the next week. Yeah, um, so that's why we say that. We know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. We do an all right job. You can tell, you can say. Well, it's fine. But, um... It's fine. <laughs> the show is fine. Oh, it was, you I'm know... this fine it's, show. It's all right. It's all right. I have notes. No. Uh, <laughs> Do tell. How far, it's, I'm just playing a game with myself. How fast can I get kicked out? Oh, but um, well. so we've mentioned a few different character names and yes. a, sort of trying not to say other character names. Yes. But without spoiling much, okay. so what characters do you play? Because I did learn after researching that people can play multiple characters, which for some reason just flew over my head. Yeah. So because the show is broken into what we call waves, mm. so waves of audience, in order each space can hold up to around about 150 people. 
people. In order to have multiple car audiences over a night, we have three waves in a show. So if you're doing two shows in a day, like a matinee and an evening show, that would mean six waves of audience. Yeah. So you're doing the same uh, character six times, which can slightly turn you a bit mad. Mm. So we we each each person has two characters, mm. and we swap each show, so it keeps it really fresh. Oh. Um, it's also really useful if anyone is off sick or unwell or an injury happens or whatever that. Um, the cover system is already in place for someone to know that track inside out. It's yeah. very useful. So what characters do you play? Just look, think about what, who's on the poster first. Think about who's on the poster. <laughs> and who you so can you, get away you, with saying. Yeah, they're very good. So on the poster you'll see a unit scientist wearing uh, a lab coat. I play Dr. Courtney, who is the chief scientific officer of this unit facility. Um, my other character, I think I'm allowed to say... Uh, I'll bleep think? it out if, if, uh, if I play not. a Time Lord Cardinal. The Time Lords are in this?! No, I knew that. Um, <laughs> on a certain <laughs> planet. Um, and yeah, Scar or something. Their name is Tepesh. Ooh. Or Tepesh, Tepesh. Depending on who's playing the role. <laughs> but my one is Tepesh. The Time Lords have different accents. I don't know. Yeah, like, if you're from do. Arcadia, you yeah, sound like you're from the North. Yes. Yeah, Pretty imagine. much. Yes. And how about you? What characters do you play? Um, so I also play a Time Lord. Oh. Um, she's... Or a Time Lady. She yes. is... Um, She's evil. It's great. <laughs> it's really fun. She's a little snake. Is it better to play evil than to play good? Um, yes, I. Like, think that's so. a quick yes. I, well, so. I don't know about you, but I play. So my one, we're sort of in uh, cohorts together. We're in we're in league together, and um, it's nice to play the bad guy as if everything you're doing is right. Yes. Mm. So you're not playing villainy it's not just oh i'm in a pantomime and i'm the bad person boo me yeah. it's hang on maybe i'm right mm. i'm probably wrong <laughs> but actually maybe and and to bring to bring but an audience with you point. and the same with you when we get together and, and we work together and at the end of that scene at the end of the show there is there is there is like a vote be very careful i'm very yeah. very careful <laughs> <laughs> there are, but there are there are these there are these moments where the audience get to choose almost a side mm. and if we've if we've brought enough people with us, it's so enjoyable to have yeah. that moment, you know. Yeah. No, terrific. So aside from the time lady, the evil time lady, <laughs> is there anyone else you play that you can say? I I don't think I can because she's not on the poster. Oh, okay. interesting. Um, it, she is one of the... Oh, God. <laughs> How do it's I describe... a character that you may she not is... see if you see the show. Ah. That's, what's, that's what's so beautiful about what we call the second act, or the second section. There are 12 tracks downstairs. You could... 12 journeys you could go on. Good Lord. And you may not come across, or you may spend the whole time with. And mm. that's why it's... That's why I think a lot of people like to come back. Yeah. Because you're like, I didn't see that. I have to see that this time. Yeah, I'm the same. I mean, I didn't know Davros was in it until the very end, and I was not pleased that I didn't get to meet him. Are you allowed to say that? You're not allowed to say that. Bleep that out. <laughs> I'm very careful not to say that. I know Davros is in the, is in the poster somewhere. <laughs> well, not in the poster, but he's been advertised. Are there maybe um, in the, uh, uh, on the, the monsters Instagram, poster? On Instagram. On, yeah. You've had the aliens poster. Didn't cheat, I'm safe. So. Yes. <laughs> but the, the beautiful thing about Davros in the show is that if, say, 150 people come to see it, 30 people might see him. That's it. That's a maximum. Yeah. Wow. And you have uh, to do something specific. You have to be in the right place at the right time. And that, I mean, that's just, that's really fun. That's like an actual, like, treasure hunt adventure. Yeah. Um, which is, which then becomes the real reward. Yeah. I mean, moving on from that, what would you say out of your two are the favourite to play? I, I go between them. I really do go between them. It's... They're, bo they're both great. Um, I, I, it, sometimes it just depends the, what mood you're in. It sounds really strange, but you could go in and have an audience member that is just so ready to have fun and yeah. listen to you, but then then argue or, or, or agree or whatever it is. And there and whatever you know, I love that. I really love it when you see an audience just understand what you're giving them and and, and enjoy it. And I, that can come from either character. No, oh, fantastic. How about you? Uh, I am the same as Simon, to be fair, I flit, but it really depends because I get different things from playing my different roles. Mm. Like, my one that she shall not be named. <laughs> her name, I can say, I can give a name. Her name is S. Hilda. Oh, I wouldn't um, be able to repeat that. And she, S. Hilda, she has the power of foresight. Mm -hmm. She 
is the reason or what part of the reason why the Time Lords exist and they have regeneration powers. I'll say that. There ah. you go. Um, and she's just it's quite banter. There's a lot of banter and I like that. And no, she's got her own little banter. she's got her own little secret little area that she, you can only be you have to be invited into. We'll try and find it. If yeah. you're next to when you're next here and you will be. Go go find it. <laughs> Every time we get close to the spoiler thing, there's I'm not going to say what it is, but there's something on the left side of me, not Jess, <laughs> there's something on the far left that I'm so worried is just going to inch closer to me, and yeah, I'm not going to say it, you two know. You can't, yeah. well, we can't say. Can <laughs> exactly. It's usually one of these or a dog, isn't it? Do you get attacked by <laughs> I've only been here once. <laughs> Thanks for the spoiler. No, it's something to look forward to, more like. Because, uh, I mean, either way, I'm coming back. Um, so, um, this is so in-depth within the Hooniverse, this whole show. There's hundreds of Easter eggs, whether it be props or character names. Um, how much did you know about the Doctor who averse going in? Jess, I'll go to you. Not a lot, in all honesty, when I started. Yeah. I was a fan of the show because I watched it when I was a kid. Um, so that was great. Terrified of Daleks, terrified of Weeping Angels. Um, you know, all these characters coming up. I loved, anyway, again, sci-fi fan, so great. But in terms of the Hooniverse, I didn't know that much. Mm -hmm. um, so the two characters that I play, looking into their backstories of how they came into being. So you had to so do a bit of research. Yes, it's so, so interesting. And there's so much. There's so, so much. So we had to cross-reference all the time, cross-referencing between the um, podcasts and the, the books, the, the TV show, like everything wow. it has to come. So we've got quite a few experts in the show that help us with all of this kind of stuff where you go, can my character do this, 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 and this? <laughs> And they're like, oh, I don't know. Well, if you tweak it to that, 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 then yes, technically you can. But there's, it was very, yeah, starting the show was very complicated. Mm. See, it's funny you mention that because before now, I actually interviewed um, one of the prop makers, James yes. Sutton. Yeah, he was last night, actually. Was he actually? Yeah. Oh, he didn't tell me. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was hilarious when I was talking to him because he was saying, like, whenever he'd come in, they just, <laughs> the different cast or crew would be like, what's that? <laughs> it's just like, I shouldn't know what that is, but yeah, I know what that is. Uh, so that's hilarious to know that that actually does happen a lot. Uh, but how about you? The, the other night, someone uh, referenced the Valiard, which I <laughs> did not know anything about. And, and my to, response was? My response was like, oh, I think my regeneration is still a little new. <laughs> and my mind is still a little hazy from the Matrix. Yes. Yeah. And then, you know, and it's nice because there are moments when... You can ask an audience member to just, and they enjoy telling you about it, you yeah. know, and you go, oh, thank you. And there's a great moment where they go, oh, cool, that, that's all right, you know. Um, for me, uh, similar, you hid behind the sofa whenever the Daleks came out as a kid. Um, always kept an interest in it because of how, just as an actor, how well actors seem to do. Yeah. Um, and I, I was in a play uh, at the time with Pearl Mackey when she got the role of Bill, Bill oh. Pollard. Um, and uh, Peter came to see the show and had a photo with the cast on the night that I wasn't there. No. But that's fine. But but it was. But then we were literally there the night that it was announced, and we're just watching her Twitter followers go that's all the way excellent. up. And it was so. There's a, there's always been a real interest, and I think the interest probably I don't know about you comes from how would I play? How would I play it if I played the Doctor, yeah. or if I played a companion, or whatever? Um, but no, a lot of a lot of research because, I mean. As I said before, I was already, I was kind of already from a, a position behind with everyone else. They already knew mm -hmm. um, and not wanting to drop the ball, wanting to try and, you know, do, do the, do the Hoovians proud, I guess. You know, you want, you don't want someone to give that look of like, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. You don't want that. <laughs> you don't, you want them to go, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. This is about to happen clearly. <laughs> and when you see that, it, 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 it's worth it. Yeah. No, that's excellent. I mean, the amount of like references that get thrown out by actors even through me on my on my one and only current visit. It, I mean, when I came the first time, I was a bit unsure. You know, it's in the in the first segment. I won't spoil too much, but you know, you're in unit shock. Um, I don't know why I'm telling to it's you to this. On big letters outside this building. It sure is. It's the one thing I know I can say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes too much sense. But I was sort of, sort of dottering around like I didn't want to talk to anyone. I was just like, oh, well, I don't know what I'm doing. But then as soon as I start hearing these references and seeing, you know, things on tables and whatnot, I'm like, 
oh no, yeah, I can go full Jack here. Yes. <laughs> yes. But, that, but that's the beauty of immersive theatre, that you have the people that just literally stand right in front of you, like, give me everything. Yeah. And there are the people at the back going, okay, I just want to make sure I'm safe. And, you know, because obviously we're coming back into theatre after a crazy period where, you know, we weren't allowed more than three people in a news agent or something like that, you know. <laughs> so people are a bit like, there's a lot of people here. I, yeah. uh, anxiety is, 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 is a big thing and it's the same for us, you know. We, 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 we want to make sure that everyone feels safe. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it's, it's amazing when we, there are a number of people that have come a lot of times and it's really lovely when you are able to remember them and interact with them and then, and they, they don't, they don't just say what you're about to say. They really enjoy watching the story again and, 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 and being a part of it. And, and I think that's what's great about this show. The, just to come again and just live out, like you said, live out your fantasy. Yeah. It's also amazing seeing adults playing. Mm -hmm. You forget, the older you get. <laughs> like, it's amazing when you see, like, you know, mid-30s, 40-year-old people getting their sonic screwdrivers out when they see... Cybermen. <laughs> yes, the, 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 yes, you yes, can say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. That's so can't cool. Um, and yeah, what can't we say? There's not a lot to be said. Um, I think I am going to have to run this through PR. <laughs> <laughs> so, this interview will be this long. Uh, after yeah. we finish, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And like you say, seeing the returning people. Who some of the you know some 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 of the ret returning people they don't necessarily speak all that much to us even though we've seen them and we we just you know we're like hello hello nice to see you yeah, a, a knowing glance yeah a knowing like, glance yeah, and they just you know they just want to see everything because they love they love being in the world so and that's great to see yeah. that and you're just like yes mate back again <laughs> let's go it's great and they're collecting the badges oh yeah yes. which is really cool I want to. Get my hand on some of those badges. You don't have them? Yeah, You've I been back more than most people. Well, exactly. How many times have I said, I have never said, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or have I? Well, it depends on your point of view. Exactly, exactly. Well, second to last question. You've been fantastic so far, oh. it must be said. <laughs> you I keep sort of having to do this. I'm all this through. Um, so, with the amount of shows you do and the amount of people that you see come and go, there have got to be some weird and funny interactions with either behind the scenes with the cast and crew or with just guests so is there i can i can see there might be a couple <laughs> bubbling in your head so simon i'll go with you first is there a funny behind the scenes or with a guest story there are many uh, <laughs> so i'll try and do maybe a couple very quickly uh, something happens in act four in the finale of the show that i won't say because it's a spoiler but my character has to uh, complete something um and that something you know is, is 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 very integral to the story and the audience have sort of learnt about it the whole way through and it's it's key and you've got a lovely i've got a lovely moment there with a bit of content to really tell everyone what just to reaffirm what's happened why this is here what everything means and what we're doing and that can take sort of five ten minutes it's a really lovely moment and sometimes individually you activate the person can you please complete it for me can you add a bit can you that's really nice sometimes they go Ba -ba 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 -bum, and you're like, oh, I've got <laughs> nothing to say now for five, ten minutes. Let's make something up. And oh, look at the lovely sky. And you know that. Kind of <laughs> so that can be very funny when people um, are ahead of you. That can be very funny. But my my favourite story is we were doing a show, and uh, I will try not to spoil it. Um, but I was in Act One. I was in Unit, and because of what happened, of the, just how the show was going. The scientists went into Act Two, oh, yeah. and went into Act Three, and 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 followed a lot of the audience through the show, and yeah. it was lovely. Mm. Um, we it was it was a moment where we we were sort of um, we were a bit understaffed, but it meant that we had more people and more fun and more people to talk to, and I mean we had a whale of a time. Yeah, uh, we felt a bit like naughty school children, <laughs> but uh, it was yeah that was really good fun. No, terrific. I mean, God, there must be millions of like little stories here and there that gets lost throughout the time. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Jess? Is there any fun stories? Well, okay, so right at the very beginning, when we first opened, in Act 2, there used to be a real-life stream of London with water, a real-life stream going through the whole act. Wow. And because it wasn't very fast-moving water, mm. when I say not very fast-moving, it was hardly moving, <laughs> um, it, uh, it looked like perspex. 
Oh no. <laughs> so a friend of mine came to see it and she was, um, she'd been given a task in act two to sing a song to a member of royalty. And yeah. well, yes, and she jumped up onto what she thought was Perspex, but jumped into the stream <laughs> and then realized that it was water and then was just like, sod it. Da, 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 da. <laughs> And we went into singing, singing in the rain. rain. Yeah, I was like, brilliant. wow, oh, no. of course it was you. Of course it was you. Well done. Um, so she owned it anyway. No, that's terrific. I mean, I bet the member of royalty was trying to hold back the tears of laughter. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, that's, that was one of my highlights, to be honest. We do have moments like that in the show where, you know... The, the, you know, no one ever wants to what we call corpsing, like laughing. Oh, but yeah. things happen. Audience members surprise us. You know, people forget lines. People say the wrong lines. That kind of thing. Um, people say silly things. Exactly. Very silly things. Um, and we do have we do have a very fun kind of intercast game called uh, Odds On or What Are the Odds, mm-hmm. um, which just keeps your brain. Like, is that like bingo? Kind of. So I would say to you something like, right, we're about to have an audience come in. What are the odds you do it in a different accent? Uh-huh. Right. Now, obviously, we're never going to do anything that's going to ruin the show, ruin the enjoyment. That's the rule. That's the rule. It has to just be a bit of fun. So probably a different accent might be a bit too far. But it might be like, what's the odds that you try and pretend um, that you can't get into your desk drawer or something and you make a big thing out of it? And I would say something like, okay, the odds are 10, 10 to 1. And we would have to pick a number between one and ten so someone would count and if we get the same number we have to do it yeah or I have to do it, whoever's been offered the odds <laughs> so it's a lot of the time it's more fun just coming up with stuff and seeing people's reaction to what they might have to do but it just keeps your brain going keeps yeah. your brain active um, and and yeah and it just and it tickles us I guess one of, one of uh, cast members in when we're time lords um, one of the cast members lost odds on the other day Harry and he had to say strawberry trifle somewhere within a very pomp, 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 pomp. As a time lord. Yeah, and yes, his content time... goes nowhere near strawberry trifle. <laughs> no. But somehow it he made well. it very well. It was yeah. very, very well. Yeah. You're turning yeah. the universe into a strawberry trifle. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, if you were in that show, now you understand why that line was really weird. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so silly things I love this good. Right, well, I'm on to my last question. And it's vanity, I won't lie to you, um, because funny story, not too long ago, before I actually came here for the first time, I actually put my CV in to try and get an audition for here. Amazing. Aww. And I got ghosted, but uh, no, <laughs> don't, worry, don't worry about it, it's fine. I I'm, not, being an I'm not bitter, <laughs> but um, really? uh, I've literally got the question written as vanity in my book. But I've got a question, you've interacted with me a bit now. Yeah. I've got my little lab coat, just in case. Yeah. If there was a character in the show that would be open, and I would be best at. Who do you think that would be? The Doctor, obviously. Well, I think, I think, I think you would, your, your, your knowledge and uh, love of the universe would lend itself very well to a Time Lord guide, um, which yes. is like our kind of roaming version of the Doctor in the show. Um, I think you'd do very well in unit with the lab coat already. But yeah, which, which scientist, though? Ah, I think, there are some I think good you'd ones. be very good in the Black Archive. Oh, as Dr. Yes. Shaw. Yeah. As I was really little thinking, bit, little bit crazy, a little bit, you know, scatterbrain maybe. Well, I can do it in the Scottish accent. Can you? That'd be great. That'd <laughs> be really good. <laughs> I'll just, yeah, no, because again, when I was here, Shaw was absolutely botly. It was hilarious. Right, right. Again, I don't want to ruin anything of what she's up to, but one of the funniest characters just to watch in the background, not even to talk to, yes. just to see her. Just <laughs> yes, yes. Trying to get in there, trying to get, yeah, it's very, very good. Yeah, I think you'd, do, I think you'd be a good Dr. Shaw, Time Log Guide. What about... I mean, can we talk about court? Court's very fun. I think it'd be great fun in court. Oh. <laughs> well, I basically was in the court last time. Not oh, to, great. Well, that's right. That's to put right. it very bluntly, as you two will know, I was dressed as the 10th Doctor at the time. There we go. <laughs> that must have been... Well... Confusing. It was a time. Yeah. <laughs> she liked Did you it. Did get though. married? Oh, yes. Yes. She loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think the person I'm interviewing next was that actually? I think it yes. probably is, yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, that'd be interesting. Well, thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. I mean, you're here to work anyway. I'm just barging in. <laughs> no, look, thank you so much for coming to see us. And um, we can't wait for you to see the show again. Yeah. Oh, I'm very excited. Play around. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I Come, like, annoy us and try and, make, try and put us off. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe I shouldn't have said that. I'm the worst at... Um... If you see these actors, reminder, Jess Simon... <laughs> Just go up to them and call them their real names. Really throw them for a loop. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. And-
and seen.